You ready, Coach? I'm ready. Right. Kyle, you think everybody on? Yeah, we got yeah, about we're five on. coaches on here, so uh, we'll let you let you speak to them, and then we'll let let Garrett let it go. Okay. Uh, first of all, I just want to welcome everybody, say uh, and, and tell you thanks. We appreciate you you jumping on with us today. Um, number one, just appreciate all the things you guys have been through this year. Um, I think it's been a, a, a trying year for all of us and it's also been incredibly rewarding just to, you know, to have a chance to work with, uh, with our players and our young people. And, um, uh, and so I just want to, again, just express my gratitude for, for uh, what you guys did this, this football season it was really pretty remarkable handling things the way that you did. Uh, second thing I just want to say is I look forward to the day that we can, get together. I don't know when that's going to be, you know, we're hoping that we'll be able to go on the road um, at, at the end of April and early May to go recruiting. I don't think that's probably going to be the case. My guess is they'll extend the dead period, um, you know, through May, that would be my guess. but you know, we're going to start spring football in, in late April in hopes that we can host uh, coaches and players at our, um, at our spring football, that's our that's our sincere hope that we can do that. That's one of the reasons why we've elected to start as late as we have, so that hopefully things will open up and and we can, you know, have coaches on our campus and have players on our campus and and uh, and be able to to be around each other. But if not, we'll adjust and figure it out. You know, my hope is that um, you know maybe we can have camps in June um, and and do some official visits and that type of thing. Um, later on in the summer as well. So, you know, I appreciate everybody being patient with us and as we're trying to navigate all of this. And look forward to better days. I know they're around the corner. And I uh, just, again, want to tell you how much we appreciate everything you've done for us and, and continue to do for our program. And please always communicate with us, you know, anything that we can do uh, to improve our communication and, uh, and you know, with, with you guys and about your players, uh, whatever the case may be, just let us know and, and we'll try to, to continue to get better. So uh, with, with no further ado, just want to welcome everybody. Again, say thanks for all that you do. Look forward to seeing you soon. And, uh, and Garrett Riley, our offensive coordinator, is up next. And Garrett's going to have a lot more interesting things to say than I do. So I wish everybody the best. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Please let us know what we can do to help. And, and uh, we look forward to, to seeing everybody in the near future. So thanks for thanks for jumping on with us and and appreciate your your interest in SMU football. Garrett, take it away. All right, thanks, coach. Yeah, appreciate you guys jumping on. You know, making making some time uh, here for about forty five minutes, an hour, however long you guys want to go. But appreciate you guys making some time for us and and hopefully you get a little something out of this. I know how a lot of these deals go. Going to talk to you about some things that, that I believe in, that we believe in at SMU, some things that we do, and you know maybe that will be something that you implement. But my hopes is at least it kind of just sparks you know a new thought or a new idea for you that can make you guys a little bit better as well. All right. So what I decided to do tonight was really to kind of touch on three different things, um, and so I'm going to end up sharing my screen here in just a, a few seconds, and we'll get in right to the tape and dive into it. I will take questions after each little segment. Again, we'll do three kind of different areas here, and I'll, I'll definitely uh, have some time at the end of those three. So any questions you guys have, we'll have some built-in time after that, and, and you guys can fire away. All right, so we'll dive right into it. Over if any of this video stuff uh, – freezes up or, or anything like that, just speak up and let us know, okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. 
All right, this first thing is, is really more of a practice kind of concept and why we do it. So how to practice screens. This is something that we implemented that I thought was really beneficial for us. And it's maybe something that you guys already do. But for a lot of colleges, you have more people okay, just from a practice standpoint. So most places that, that I've been or been accustomed to is you're going to have a scout team and they're going to kind of be your dummies. They're going to be your look team that you're going against in a screen period. That's all great, but when you're limited from a personnel standpoint or just the flat out not having to coach up a look team guy, we found that this was actually a really, really good way to practice a screen drill. And it's really just using those little light med, med balls that most of us have in our weight rooms. And just the idea of it is basically just teaching guys landmarks and, and really the offensive line in particular, I thought it was very beneficial because these guys could understand that they had to get to a space with speed. Okay. And so these are our position coaches that we have kind of set out in different areas based on whichever screen that we are throwing. You'll see at the top of the screen on more of a kick out block by our, our left guard on the corner. And so what I felt like it really did was it kind of mass produced all of our offensive linemen on how to get out quickly and to truly just commit to it and go and not be tiptoeing around like all of us are kind of accustomed to with offensive linemen when they get in space. Okay. So again, here's just kind of the back view of it and how we do our screen drill. And we did this in spring football, the limited spring football that we did have. We did it in fall camp and we still did this in season. So here's just another clip of it. You know, we got to kind of have our dual screen going on right here with the uh, tailback swing screen into the boundary and then kind of your jailbreak tunnel screen on the backside here to the field. Okay, again, not as much getting into the true X's and O's of this play, but I do think it's something that, uh, that may be something you could implement in a practice setting that would make some, some sense for you. Get to a different screen here. All right, so here it is, just really kind of the same thing out of a two-by-two two set. So we still have our kind of dual screen with our tailback swing screen into the boundary. We've got two kind of crack blocks going on up top in the boundary. And then on the back side of that, we have the true jailbreak break screen going on. Again, for your, your skill guys, for your receivers, for your tight ends and the blocking scheme of this part, I thought the med balls were just okay. I thought where this really made sense and where we really kind of gained a lot out of this, like I said, was for the, those old linemen, just understanding landmarks, understanding areas, and committing to that with speed. I think there's one more, and then we'll, we'll show a few game clips where, where you can kind of see uh, hopefully how this makes sense. All right, so really kind of the same deal up top again, just finding landmarks, rolling the ball, letting those guys – uh, trust it. And one thing I think that's probably a coaching point too for all you offensive line guys or just screen game guys in general is the thing you'd like to do if you do this is when they do have contact with the med ball, right? It's, an, it's unrealistic in terms of the point of attack and how they're going to block him. What we thought was probably pretty smart was telling these old linemen when they do get to the ball of trying to really drop your hips and pick the ball up aggressively, okay? Just to add another element to it that they're going to be in an athletic position. That was our whole deal. All right, getting to a couple game clips here to where I think this really kind of highlights what we're talking about. Okay, so we kind of have that dual screen going on here. Swing screen with the tailback into the boundary, and it's more of the jailbreak up top. All right, but you'll see here, our left guard does a great job of trusting this, trusting his landmark, being flat, doing it with a commitment and speed. And you'll see here at the end of this, you know, he does a great job. Okay? If we're doing this with hesitation and we're practicing it that way where there is a lot of hesitation, then I don't think this is going to be a play we can mass produce. All right? So my whole deal was with our the way we practice this, I really thought and felt like when we watched cut-ups here the last few weeks 
from this last season, I really felt like the way we practice enhanced our slow screens and anything that our own line was truly involved in. I thought it really paid dividends for us this season. It really did. You can kind of see the example here. A couple more. All right. So this is going to be the same deal. This is going to be that same screen. We're going to have the swing kind of screen down here at the bottom of your screen, and we will have the gel break up top. So it's a dual screen. I think we end up getting zero blitz here. All right. So we're in a great play call. We're going to end up trying to throw the, the gel break. And you can just see, we end up, we do not pop this one. <laughs> It's uh, still tough for me to watch, but in terms of our own line and where people are and hitting their landmarks and doing it in a timely fashion, I thought this was pretty good. Obviously, I wish we'd finished better and we were able to pop this thing versus zero, but I really like what our own line's doing in terms of where they're getting and doing it with conviction and doing it with speed. God dang. All right. Okay, here's one. Again, I think uh, this clip, we're going to catch the defense and zero blitz once again. This is not a dual screen. This is just our true slow screen to the tailback. All right. So just off drop back protection. Here we go, throwing the slow screen to the tailback. That's it. So we catch them in zero, and it's the same thing. All right. We're going to be cracking the first thing in the box with our uh, slide up top. Same deal. I really like our, our offensive line getting out flat and doing this with speed. All right, last last one on this one. We'll move on. All right, yeah, so this is a little bit different screen here, but the same principles for, for what we're talking about. We're going to throw more of a missile screen that's right now up top into the boundary. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. All right, it's good by our slot up top, doing a great job of being tempoed and helping out our tackle right here that's going to be responsible for the number two defender up top. Again, it's not perfect by our right tackle, but it's pretty dang good. Okay, and this is, again, just what I thought we did a, a pretty good job with and how we practiced it because y'all know how it is. It's starting to trickle in to, to the high school level for sure is you're getting all these odd defenses. You're getting all these exotic looks. A lot of the pre-snap pictures are never going to be how it's going to end up post-snap. And so there's just so much moving parts for us in the screen game. And so for us, it's how can we just mass produce all of this? Right. If it's not the perfect look, how can we practice this in a way that we feel like we can mass produce it no matter what happens? That's our whole deal. I thought this was a good way and hopefully, you know, something that maybe you could take with you, maybe not, uh, as you guys move forward. Okay. Any questions? I'll kind of pause it there. Uh, any questions on how we practice these screens, the thought with the med balls, is anything else y'all want me to expand on with that part of it? There's something in the chat. Yeah, go, go ahead. If, if you guys want to ask a question, you guys just unmute yourself and uh, fire away. Hey, Coach, I have a quick question for you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got you. So um, just real quick, obviously with the moving parts and the components of the practice piece, and I definitely get it, it's never going to look exactly how you want it to at times. But uh, with your quarterback's eyes, what specific is he looking for to, in order to throw the, the swing first and then back to the jailbreak or vice versa? What are you telling him with his eyes and where to throw to? Okay, yeah, great question. All right, so on that, you're talking about kind of that dual screen that we have. Yes, sir. How, how we would teach this is basically for us, he was looking at the edge. So he's not looking at a linebacker right here. He's got to have a sense of just the overall look. But what he's seeing right here is he's trying to throw the tailback first. Okay? If this defensive end gets a pass rush or gets into a pass rush where he feels, does not feel good about our tailback getting out cleanly, 
if this defensive end, for whatever reason, peeled, then he would move on to the tunnel screen as his second read. Okay? So he is looking at the edge over here into the boundary. It's not necessarily a person. He's looking, can my bag get out clean? If that's a yes, I'm going to give it to him right now. That's what he does right here. Okay? If that was taken away, just like I said, by, by a, someone in man on him, by the defensive end peeling, then he would move away to get to the jailbreak screen. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. So there's this example, and we'll watch this other one. So this is the zero blitz one right here. So you got all these guys mugged up, and our rule for the, the X down here at the bottom of the screen is he's going to take the first thing inside, first backer. Well, if you're the X right here, and you get this whole mugged up look and you got all this stuff going on, that gets a little problematic, right? So we knew going to the, into this game, we knew versus zero blitz, we want to throw the jailbreak. So, again, some of this is going to depend on just the overall look and just coaching this guy up from a week-to-week -week basis of what the quarterback's going to see. So we knew, like I said, going into it, pretty good chance we are going, going to get zero blitz. If that's the case, we got to do a great job of getting depth, getting big, and giving that tunnel tunnel screen a chance right here, which he does. Hopefully that that answers your question. All right, let's see if there's another one here. All right, anything else on uh, on the screen game in general or how we practice it? Okay. All right, we'll move forward then. All right, this next deal was uh, really kind of a jet sweep package that, that we implemented this last season. I thought it was really, really productive for us, for you guys that have been around or watch us and all that. I mean, we definitely have a lot of air raid principles, you know, especially with our pass game and how we formation. Um, we do have some tight ends here. And so when you have tight ends, a lot of that stuff – kind of changes a little bit in terms of what all we can do. We just have more variety because we do have tight ends and we feel like we can be a little bit more expansive in the run game. And really because of that, it just made sense for us to, to implement this. And this is going to be probably stuff you guys do, you know, at the college level, it's going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a take on what you'll see from like the Boise State. You know, from some of the, the Gus Malzahn tree of the Auburn run game, I mean, that, that's really at the nuts and bolts of what this is, okay? So I'll, I'll get into kind of what it was for us and then really just how we coach this thing up and really what the quarterback is looking at at the end of the day. So this whole little segment right here, this is a read for the quarterback. He's either going to have the option to hand or shovel pass the jet sweep or he's going to have a read or an option to hand off whatever run scheme we have called. Okay, so this is not just a straight-up call of hand in the jet sweep or hand off outside zone. The quarterback is reading this. Okay, quarterback's going to make us right. So right here, I'll just kind of let the play roll real quick, and then we'll kind of dissect this thing. So we're in a uh, two-by-two two set. we got a wing up top, all right, tight end and wing set. And we've got two guys arcing for the jet sweep, or we have outside zone working to the left side here, okay? So just so you all have a little understanding of the play here now, this is what we're telling the quarterback. First thing we're telling the quarterback right now is he needs to look at a dude rule, okay? Real simple, dude rule. That's the first thing. What is dude rule? All he's looking at is for the jet sweep, he's looking up top, for the guys that we're arcing to right now. Do they have too many guys? Is it bad leverage? That's how we term it. Dude rule. That's thing number one. So that's really his pre-snap key. All right? Beyond dude rule, beyond the pre-snap and leverage look, then the quarterback's going to have a sense of bump or rotation. If those backers really bump over with the motion – then he's going to be more inclined to hand off the outside zone. If those safeties really rotate, rock and roll with the motion, 
then he's going to be more inclined to hand off the outside zone. Okay? So we'll, we'll kind of get into it here and see a few examples. So we are under center right here. We're telling our jet sweep guy to be one yard behind the quarterback, all right, for this exchange. He may get it. He may not. All right? So we end up handing this thing to the jet sweep. We've got our two tight ends arcing up top, and we hand it off to a really fast guy, and he makes us look pretty smart. Okay, again, this is a read. Would he have been wrong to hand off outside zone? No, he would still not be wrong. Okay, he would not be wrong. We'd still be in good shape. We'd be handing off outside zone into the boundary. Our X right here should be looking to push crack. All right, and we're we got pretty good numbers running outside zone to the left here. Okay, so that's what I like about this play as a play caller is uh you know someone for us that that's thinking about implementing this play uh for a specific week it's really kind of a stress-free call all right for your coordinator you got you feel pretty good that no matter what they do you got a chance for a pretty solid play right i mean it's a pretty stress-free call All right, look at a couple, couple more. Okay, so same play call. Y'all can see we're formation into the boundary with the tight end wing set once again. This is exact same play call, right? So same thing. Grab this mouse. Right now, okay, we're doing the same deal. We're looking at dude roll. Okay, for the jet sweep, he's looking. Are there a lot of dudes? Is there bad or good leverage? That's the pre-snap look for the quarterback. So right now, he's decided that he didn't like the look for whatever reason. I think he just got a little spooked. Y'all can see that they're in a two, two high look, or really a three high. This is the robber stuff, so there's actually three safeties deep. So he knows that we're good either way here, all right? So first thing, dude rule. Dude rule is actually okay. Okay, in my mind, he really probably should have handed the jet sweep. But if he's ever gray, if he's ever uncertain, then we told him to hand off the run scheme that was called. In this case, again, it was outside zone to the left. Again, a true total read. Okay, if some of you guys do this, and especially if you're an under center team, to me this is a big deal if you are an under center team. Okay? So right now, Shane, our quarterback, he knew right now he was going to hand off the outside zone. Well, watch what he does with the timing of the exchange. He allows the jet sweep guy to clear so he can have a clean exchange with the tailback. And he doesn't have to mess with faking the jet sweep and then trying to haul, haul ass to try and get back there and hand off the outside zone. So if you guys are an under center team, to me, that's a very big key in terms of timing. He does a good job of letting the jet sweep guy clear, and now he's got a clean exchange with his tailback. So again, to kind of review that one, he definitely would be good to hand off the jet sweep here. He's always going to be safe to hand off the outside zone. All right, same play, just going the other way. So now we're in gun. Now it's the shovel pass. Okay, so now the jet sweep guy is going to be one yard in front of our quarterback. Same deal. He's looking up top right now. He knows he's got both of his tight ends arcing, and he's looking at dude roll. Okay, right now dude roll looks pretty good up top since we have two tight ends, right? The spacing, the leverage looks pretty good. Okay, so beyond that, on the motion, all he's checking out with his eyes is bump, or rotation, okay? SFA, they don't bump, they don't rotate right here at all. He's giving the shovel and off we go. All right, we do get called for holding here, but it's still a pretty decent, pretty decent take. Okay, different set now. So now we're just in a two by two set. We got our tight end attached down here at the bottom of the screen. We have our tight end up top that's just off the ball. Okay, so now it's the same principle, except we have just one guy arcing up top to the field just because of the formation. 
So same deal right here pre-snap. Quarterback's looking up top to the left to see the dude roll once again. Right now, he's a little bit leery just because of how low this backer is in the odd front right now. Okay, Because he's so tight to the line of scrimmage, he kind of feels like that's going to be a tough block for our tight end. And the fact that this safety is already starting to creep down pretty low. So right now, the quarterback's antennas are going off a little bit. He's probably going to be a little bit more inclined to hand off outside zone to the right here. Okay. Could we have made it work up top? Maybe, but this is definitely the right decision by the QB here. All right, pretty well done up front, cutting on the backside. We got a nice little crease here with the outside zone. Really going back, like I said, we watched all our cutups in the last last several weeks, going back and watching last year. You know, I think something I wish I would have done, what we would have done more is number one, probably do this more because it was just really efficient. It was really productive. Number two is we pretty much solely ran outside zone with this little jet sweep package. You know, moving forward, or I wish we probably would have implemented a little more inside zone or even some split zone stuff off of this. Okay, so, you know, that, that was kind of my takeaway after watching ourselves do this. Same deal. We got one more, one or two more examples of this stuff, and then we'll, uh, we'll open it up for questions on this. So same deal. Down here at the bottom of the screen, that's where we have our tight end arcing for the jet sweep. So right now, dude rule. Dude rule actually looks okay just because they are soft. All right? Again, this guy is kind of in that gray area just a little bit in terms of our arc block. And then I think what the quarterback really starts to feel here is these linebackers, these inside backers, just really starting to bump over just a little bit. It's nothing crazy, but I think he does see that guy start to plus over. And now it's just an easy exchange once again for outside zone back into the boundary. Let it play just one more time. That one's from offset. Definitely much easier for the quarterback just in terms of the whole operation. Uh, keeping the tailback and offset keeps the quarterback's eyes forward and just a much easier, like I said, operation. Okay, a little bit different set now. Okay, so now we're not in a double tight type of set. Now we're just in a normal 11 personnel set. We got our twins into the boundary. You got the tight end up field to work with here. So right now, all right, the jet sweep's gonna be going to the field. How does the dude roll look up top to the field? The hell, it looks about as good as it's ever gonna look, right? I mean, no question about it. Right now, you're gonna be giving the jet sweep. All right, no question about it. So pretty easy here, easy decision by the QB. Just so much space, so much grass to the field there as they're in their kind of robber package in this three safety stuff. Great job by our C, by our outside receiver up top. You got kind of a trap, hard corner. Really good job, flatten him off. And then, uh, and then from there, just continuing to play. Tight end as well, really good. All right, this was kind of really a short yardage, kind of goal line type of deal, but it's the same principle for the quarterback. Even though we're in a bigger kind of 13 personnel look, same exact thing for the quarterback. So the jet sweep is going to obviously be going down here to the bottom of the screen. Right now, dude roll looks really good. This was a play call where we just had one tight end arcing. Okay, so we just have one tight end. Right now, because of where we are on the field, it's good leverage. We got a tight end on a corner. Once again, from under center, jet sweep guy is going to be one yard behind the quarterback for that exchange. And then off we go. Same exact play call as all those other ones. Same play call. All right. All right, we'll kind of pause there. And uh, again, you guys just kind of unmute yourself and you guys fire away if you have some questions on this. Coach, I got a quick question on that one. Yes, sir. Two things. Let's say they walk those safeties down, just a DC, just in the center house. What do you do if they walk everybody down last minute? If they walk you... everybody down? Yeah. 
If they walk them down, okay, again, that to me would send my antennas up on dude rule. Right. I'm always going to be safe rather than sorry if that happens. I'm going to be handing off the run scheme that's called. Quarterback should hand off the outside zone or he should hand off inside zone. Whatever you're doing off of it, that's what I would tell the quarterback. If all of a sudden, man, it's pressure to it, they walk everybody down, I'm going to be safe rather than sorry, and I'm just going to hand off the run scheme. And my last question is, do you have a boot off of that when you go 13? We, we, uh, we really didn't do a whole lot off of it this past season. Um, I haven't done a boot off of it. I've done a little bit of play action type of stuff, you know, off of it. That's, that's been good at other, at other schools. Um, but I think the naked, if you can figure out a, a naked off of it, I think it's very intriguing. Yeah. I mean, the more you can kind of have off of this, the better. And we probably should. Cause like I said, this was kind of a productive package for us last year, you know, and just the more we can kind of build off of that whole thing, you know, I think it really will be a weapon for us. I was, asking, I was asking that because the detached uh, tight end you had off of it, like he going to block the corner and, yep. run it and come run him underneath on a rack or something like that. I was just exactly. asking. That. Exactly. No, I mean, I'm, I'm really intrigued. And that's kind of one of our spring deals that we're kind of investigating is what can we kind of build off of this that may give us, give us a little more, a little more ammo. Coach Riley. Yes, sir. Does a seven ever give you trouble to the jet side? Is there ever a time uh, when you want to uh, maybe have a have a tight end block that guy rather than arc? Okay, so uh, say it again to the side of the jet sweep or the the run scheme. Yes, to the jet sweep. Okay, you're, you're asking. I'm asking, asking one more time. I'm asking about that that seven technique. If you're in the tight end uh, wings uh, wing set, right. Let me you're going to you're gonna jet to that tight end. Um, he's he's left unblocked, right? And you're you're out running the guy most of the time. Yes. Uh, is, does does that player ever uh, become a factor? It, it, Absolutely. Does... Yeah. Great question. Absolutely. So your question is: If this defensive end at the top of the screen was head up to our tight end or even inside. You know, how does that play into the arc and what you do with your tight ends? Am I following you? Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. All right, good. So that's what you got to be – that's what you got to feel pretty good about from a, a game planning perspective, right? To me, that's game planning. And your question was, okay, if they have a defensive end up top, Again, he's head up or inside of our attached tight end at the top of the screen. Well, to me, there's no need to really arc both tight ends, all right, just because you could have kind of a, a catastrophe in the backfield if you don't. So if you're worried about a seven technique, you know, rushing straight up the field and he's just kind of a problem, then what I would do and what we would do, see if I can kind of draw on here, is we would have this tight end stay in and be a part of the outside zone or whatever run scheme you got going on, and we would just only arc one tight end. Okay. If they were playing a certain technique or they did not have a defensive end that we weren't really worried about from, from your question, then we would rather arc both tight ends. Uh, and hopefully that, that kind of makes sense. Okay. Yes, yeah, if you got a defensive end where, you know, he kind of just does his own crap a lot of times and you never know what the heck he's doing and he just shoots straight up field a lot, even in run game, then uh, you're kind of playing with fire a little bit. And the other part I'd say about that too, if you want to be safe rather than sorry, the best way to do this play, no question about it, is to do it from under center. So even if that worst case scenario thing happens, like you're alluding to, with the defensive end playing up the field, doing it from under center hits so much faster right. that it's going to be really hard for that defensive end to make the play anyways. Okay. Uh, my other question was, what concepts away from the jet 
What other concepts do you like? Run game, staying with the run game stuff you're saying, instead of outside yeah. zone? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think really what makes sense to me would probably be, be doing like a split inside zone. A split flow inside zone where you're still protecting your backside edge. Like to me, that would really make sense and be something that's, uh, again, kind of a safe call for the coordinator and really kind of put you in a good position no matter what they do. So if you can kind of formation this whole little package to where you can incorporate the jet sweep with a uh, split inside zone, to me, I think that's a that's probably something to really look into. Okay. Thank you, Coach. We did not do it last year, but like I said, after we watched all these cut-ups, that was something that I wrote down that, that we just kind of need to mix in what we're doing run game-wise along with this whole jet sweep package. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, great question. And we got ways where we can just give a toss to a skill guy and there's no read to it. We got other ways to kind of do a little bit of that misdirection stuff. But I think just this whole package of allowing your quarterback to read it and kind of make it right, you know, to me, it is something that you do got to work. You do got to invest in. You got to have a quarterback that just understands football. But if you got a guy that can do that and, and is heady, to me, this is, uh, you know, something that might make, make sense for you. Anything else on uh, on jet sweeps? Uh, real quick, I got, I got one, Coach. Yeah. What are your teaching points as far as steps are concerned for the offensive line on your outside zone? On the outside zone? Yeah. Just steps-wise. I just wonder what you guys, uh, what your key points are for steps. Yeah, so we, we uh, this was the first year that we kind of really went full bore on, on outside zone. A lot of it's going to depend on the front that you're going against. Long story short, what we're after is they're going to take three steps to their gap. And then at that point, they got to make a decision of they either got to latch on to the person that's in their gap or they got to climb. So we kind of do it off of three steps is really what we're after. Three steps laterally. I'm taking the guy in my gap. If there's nobody in my gap, then I'm going to climb up vertically. So you have the entire line moving together three steps? You don't have – you're not going off of bodies? You're going off of just straight gaps? Well, it definitely is not just as easy as take three steps to the left and then go block somebody. <laughs> yeah, no, it's but... definitely not that easy. Like I said, it's definitely going to depend on what, what front you're seeing, what technique you have. Yeah. How heavy a guy's playing into you, all those things are kind of kind of going to go into it, of course. But like a base one or a, a base day one installation, these guys are going to know that we're trying to get three steps in the ground before we go up vertically. All right. Thanks, Coach. Um, coach, so yes, this end is out there really, really wide. Is that an automatic give to the running back on the zone, or do you teach your tight end or wing to go out there and try and get them? No, if it's a defensive end that's really wide, that yeah, you're right. I mean, that's basically going to tell the quarterback pre-snap that, hey, dude, we're just totally out leverage for the jet sweep here. It's not even going to get started. You need to hand off the, the outside zone. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you, Coach. Absolutely. A trial. Yes, sir. So I see that you, uh, on one play, you had your offensive line cut, and other plays you didn't. What indicates when they should cut on your outside zone? Good question. Um, we really didn't cut as much on the backside last year. Uh, that was again, that was one thing that that we know we're gonna. We're, we want to do better and we're going to allow our guys to do that more just because as you saw the one where he did cut, there was just a huge crease when he did. So we kind of tried not to allow our guys to cut as much last year. Hindsight's 2020. We wish we would have probably cut a little bit more. So if you guys do this, I would totally try and cut as much as you can on the backside. I really would. Cause even when you miss, you're going to have those guys slow down a linebacker that they're, Climb it up to, you're going to slow them enough where it's going to give that running back a chance to make it right. Um, 
So hopefully that kind of somewhat answers your question. I wish we would have done it more. We just really were kind of under the impression, that, under the impression of how we installed this last year, that we tried to stay up as much as possible. We should have cut every play, every time we ran. We should have cut. Right. Yeah. There's our line guys, and there, there you have it. It's just tough. I mean, as you guys know, all these backside blocks are just really, really tough, and it's going to put you in a bind uh, more times than not. So the more times you can just throw, the better. Even if you lose on the cut, the thing in my mind, what it does for the tailback is it at least kind of gets the party started, and he at least kind of can make you right, even if you're wrong up front. That was kind of our takeaway after watching these. I got you. Thank you. Okay, anything else on uh, on Jeff Sweets? We'll kind of move on to the last deal here. We'll get to a pass. Okay, cool. All right, not to bore you guys to death with uh, Mesh, but this was a good play for us this year. Um, obviously, with Mesh, there's just a, a endless amount of ways to do this, an endless amount of tags that you can put on it. Um, but for us, last year, this was a very productive drop back for us. It was a great third down kind of package for us this last season. That's primarily when we called it. And we just tried to do it just a couple of ways. And as we went through the year, just the thought was to get really good at doing it just a couple of ways, right? Just because it is an expensive play, you do got to invest in it. There's a lot of different parts to it, but going to dive in here to a uh, just a couple of base ways that we did it. So right here, we're just in a two-by-two two set. We got our tight end attached up top to the field. For us, the Y, our tight end, the Y is always setting the mesh, okay? We have our H. This is technically our H at the bottom of the screen that was under. What we did for the other guys not included in the mesh was our base rule was our guys were going to run a six step out. Okay, so up top, our Z, he's going to be running a, a six step out. And then our X down here, the guy that's on the ball, he should be running the same. What we got to, no matter what coverage we saw, whether it was man, whether it was cover two, it didn't matter. Those outs were locked. We didn't, con we did not convert those to shake routes. We didn't convert it to anything unless the quarterback signaled them something differently. Okay. So we tried to eliminate the thinking out of it in terms of like conversion routes, if that makes sense. Okay. So going along with this pre snap, any two by two mesh, here's what we told the quarterback is basically you need to put the back away from the side that you're going to start. So right now in the quarterback's mind, He's at least going to peek the out to the field. Okay, they spin down to a little cover three scheme. Off our third step, he definitely could throw the out to the field. It's going to have to be an aggressive throw. This flat defender gets out there just enough, buzzes out there that I think it spooks the quarterback. And so now he simply is going to get to the mesh. He's not necessarily going to the Y. He's not necessarily getting fixated on the H. He's trying to read this whole mesh as a whole picture. All right? It's not like he's looking at one guy or the other. He's trying to sense this whole thing that's going to be right there in front of him, and then from there decide who's open and who's not. I mean, that's the simple truth of it. Okay? So he's putting the tailback away from where he's starting. Right now he says no on the out. Now he gets to the mesh. This is a really, really good job by the mesh. Number one, it's a tight mesh, okay? Number two, both guys are working to the correct windows. It's obviously zone coverage. Nobody's chasing the mesh guys. They know they have to find a soft spot, and then they got to define their route when they do shut it down. The H, the guy that catches the ball, does a great job. The other thing you'll notice here, you guys do a lot of drills for this. It's just kind of become very popular nowadays with throwing the football, is putting this ball away from the nearest defender, which the quarterback does, and it allows our receiver to turn that direction 
and go and get an extra four, three or four yards. That's a big deal. All right. That's really good teach tape in terms of the accuracy, our guys being on the same page, telling the, the ball carrier where to turn. There's a lot of good stuff right here. Okay. Same exact play. Same exact play. So again, he put the toe back to the field now. So that's telling me that he's at least peeking out the left side, all right, up top. He's checking out the Oki. Obviously, the uh, the out does not look very good here in the cloud coverage. So he's getting to the mesh here pretty quickly. They're dropping to Tampa two. The thing I don't like here is we still do not get a very tight mesh. I don't like that. And our Y, the guy on top, he needs to just be more sudden when he shuts this down. He needs to be more definitive when he shuts down in zone right here, okay? If I'm the H, if I'm the guy up top, as I work in here, the H is doing the correct thing. It's definitely zone. Nobody's chasing the mesh. He knows right now that, number one, he cannot settle until he meshes. You can't settle before you mesh, right? That's not an option. So right now, he's knowing that he's got to mesh with the tight end, and now at this point, he's trying to get to this second window that we can all see. He's trying to attack this piece of grass to work into, all right, which he ultimately does. Now, obviously, this ball could have gone to the Y. I think the Y, if he would have defined it quicker, I think the ball probably would have. But a pretty decent job of stepping up there on a third and medium and, and getting a nice conversion there, all right, in Tampa 2. Okay, one more exact same play. This is actually a bad example, all right? We end up making it work here, but this was not, not what we want. So, again, backs away. It's two by two. So, he puts the back away from where he's starting. So, he's at least going to check out the out cut down here at the bottom of the screen. Doesn't like it. Okay, so now he's going straight to the mesh. Okay, what do we not like about the mesh here? Well, obviously, that's a horrible mesh, right? They're not tight. At all, we kind of got guys, you know, just not in the right spot. Our tight end should sit right now, okay? And then he could expect the football on his inside shoulder. So there's just a lot of that detail and a lot of those nuances that are not very good right here. This is a bad example, okay? Now here's a good thing. You had Shane Duchel and you had Kylan Granson, who was a really good player, and they just kind of figured it out and make the ball play, all right? That's awesome, okay? But – of what we can control, what we feel like we should be able to mass produce is this mesh right here. Not very good at all. Okay. All right. Here's a little bit different variation. So now we did uh, get into some of this crunch stuff um, or tight kind of sets. So right here, this was a pretty simple and easy base way for us to run mesh out of now three by one. It was basically, long story short, is we're going to attach smash on the front side of mesh. That's it, especially from this condensed set. So right now, we're going to have our outside receiver. Bear with me. I'm drawing on a computer here, so this is probably not going to be a great drawing. We're going to have a corner by our outside receiver there. This guy's going to be on an arrow route. He's going to be our flat controller. We still have our Y, okay, setting the mesh. The single receiver, always in mesh, will be a part of the mesh, and he'll be underneath, okay? We got our back on a check swing to the weak side, okay? So just a simple way to do it out of a condensed set and do it out of a three-by-one. So quarterback, what he's looking for right here is, first thing, he's going to read out the smash, all right? Everybody in America runs this uh, with the smash component. So it's an easy, high-low read for the quarterback right here. We really end up basically getting a zero blitz, but we just have such great leverage for the corner route that it was a pretty stress-free throw for our QB. So, again, he's thinking the smash part of this play first. If that's covered, if that's not good, obviously he's getting down to the mesh. Okay, so pretty good job here, again, 
felt like this was a pretty simple way to get to it and uh, was an effective way for us this season. Same play. Now we got the, the little cluster up top in a condensed set. So same thing. We're going to have smash up top. So he's reading out the high low right now. The arrow routes there. If he can take the easy money, take it right now. Really good job of getting the ball out quickly. Our age is able to turn this thing upfield, you know, and turn this into a nine yard game. All right, off of a quick throw. All right, a couple more, and then uh, we'll kind of finish finish this thing off. All right, this is kind of the last little way that we'll show you. So this became definitely a really good third down option for us. This was uh, primarily for man, but still felt really confident and good about it with, uh, with zone coverage. Okay, so at the end of the day here, we're basically getting to like a, a mesh double wheel concept. All right? So we're going to take our number two right here. He's going to be our motion guy, and he's going to end up being the wheel, okay, into the boundary. All right? Our Y is still part in setting the mesh. The single receiver, he's definitely a part of the mesh, base rule. On double wheel, our Z in this picture knew, again, sorry, this is a horrible drawing. He was on a five-step glance, okay? He was the first read. Our tailback now is going to be on a free-release wheel to the field, all right? So I'll leave, leave this just for a second. Again, I apologize for the drawing. For the quarterback right here, all he's really reading is the glance. That's his first read. He's going glance, wheel to the mesh, okay, and the wheel to the tailback. He's going glance, wheel, mesh. That's it. All right? If they pressure, he knows his hot is going to be the tailback on the free release wheel. All right, so here we go. Let's let this thing roll. So there's the motion. We're going to end up getting this double wheel action. Just because of where this safety to the field is aligned, he's kind of in that no man's land. And so just pre-snap wise, the quarterback doesn't really like the glance for good reason. Now he goes to the wheel. There's a lot of space out there. He puts it on him right now. And right here in a third and six situation, you know, we put it on the tailback, arguably the best athlete on the field. We give it to him in space and then let him go figure it out from there. So this was his second read. Really good job. Okay, as far as the mesh, kind of just take a look at that. Decent job here. We do got a tight mesh. Probably going to be in good shape had we gotten to it. All right, a couple more of the same play. Here's really the exact same place. So now we've got this little free, free, uh, free receiver set into the boundary here. We're going to bring our number two in motion, and now we're just running double wheel into the boundary. So we're going to have our glance up top, free release wheel by the back into the boundary, and then he's getting to his mesh. So right now, quarterback's thinking glance, wheel, mesh. Great job by the mesh guys. It's tight. It's a great rub, great decision, go into the next window, and we hit him on time, and we're able to kind of hit him on the move here. Really, really good. Same exact play, same exact play, same way, same direction. So right now in, in this coverage, okay, definitely looking like a man principle, so it's basically a no on the glance right now into the boundaries, just bad leverage, a lot of dudes in there. Thing that we would want our tailback to do right here is we want him to turn this thing up vertically sooner. He's a little too late. He's kind of selling too much width here into the boundary. So it's a no on the tailback. Same thing. He gets to his mesh. We're able to kind of pick this guy and rub in man to man coverage and we can get just enough, right? We get a step on him. Again, a nice third and five conversion. All right, we're almost done. I think I got one or two clips, and that's it. And then we'll, uh, we'll get to questions. All right, so kind of same deal, guys. The glance is up top. He's got the back on the wheel into the boundary. 
and then he's got his mesh working here out of this three by one set. Again, a lot of stuff that I don't like with the mesh right here. Number one, y'all can see what this receiver at the bottom of the screen, he's already looking at the quarterback right now. That's not good. He does not need to get his eyes to the quarterback until he messes. So he, our, our X right here is looking way too soon. Okay, beyond that, do we get a tight mesh? No. Okay, so there's some bad stuff going on with that part of it. Now, we get to the correct windows. We have good protection here, so we're able to really read this thing out. And we get to where we need to get to. It's just not as good as what we want. Okay. All right, I think that was the last clip. What questions do we have on uh, on this? I think I got one in the chat. Hey, Coach, earlier on your uh, – on the double outs, on the single receiver side, um, the very first clip, do you have him purposely stem that out because of the cover three, that soft cover three, and also to allow that mesh guy to get a little more space to room or more room to work? Is that is that purposeful? So this receiver up top? Correct. So he's stemming for that speed out, and obviously I'm assuming he's creating space for himself and his route, but also that for number four, coming on the on that mesh yeah a little bit i mean we didn't we didn't talk to him too much about his stem based on the mesh guy it was more you got a stem on how you need to to go win on your route we didn't really we didn't really uh present it to him that way that hey you got to take this specific release because the mesh is coming to you we didn't feel like we had to do that probably just because of our formation is by the timing of it it probably didn't matter and so for how we coach that receiver up top and for your question is really he just needs to stem this in a way that he has a chance to win on his out. That's it. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. So you got another one in here. All right. Any other questions on, uh, on any of these meshes, any of these formations or anything like that? Uh, I have a question for uh, the guy setting the mesh. Is, is his landmark, his landmark is the, the linebacker's toes? Uh, yeah, good question. So we really told him more of, of just the depth. Okay. And really kind of the money of, of where it's going to be and where you're going to have some consistency is five to six yards. We felt like if it was five or six yards, that was going to give us consistency with really no matter who's in there. Because the theory behind this is really no matter who you plug in there, they should be able to run this, okay? No matter if it's a tight end, if it's a skill guy, whatever. We wanted it to just be simple enough that it was interchangeable in terms of who's doing it. So just from a coaching perspective, that's what we chose to do, and that's how we presented it to our guys. More of just five to six yards, you're setting the mesh. It's the guy underneath. It's his job to make sure it's a tight mesh, right? The guy on top, he's the guy in basketball setting the pick, all right, on pick and roll. In basketball, it's the guy with the ball who's got to make sure that it's a tight rub and you actually do get a nice pick and roll, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Good question. What else? Hey, Coach, I have a question. Yes, sir. In your – in your mesh concepts, you said the quarterback has the discretion to set the back to the side that he is not going to start with. So in that situation, since the back is check swinging, who calls your protection? Okay, so it's a great question. So our offensive line, they dictate every time when we're in a six-man drop back protection, they dictate where we're sliding to based on the look. So our play call does not indicate to our offensive line of, hey, it's 60 or 61 protection. It does not tell them to automatically slide left or slide right. Okay, we, We've gone to this a few years back and just allowing our center to kind of make it right for us. You just get so many different variations and there's so much stuff that can go on from a protection standpoint. And we throw it enough and we drop back enough to where this makes sense for us, right? If you don't draw back and do this all the time, 
then this is probably something you don't want to do with your offensive line. If you got a smart center and this is something you do a lot, then to me it makes a lot of sense giving that guy a lot of liberty to ID where he wants to and set the slide where he wants to. Great question. So as you can imagine with that, because our center dictates where the protection's going, is there has to be great communication with your offensive line and your tailback. So your tailback knows who the heck he's responsible for. So there's a lot of, there's some teaching to it, but again, this is something we do a lot and felt like it was gonna be uh, probably the best thing for us. Anything else? All right, let's see if I can stop this and uh, kind of end this. I hope that hope that words, hope it maybe like again, like I said, I hope it kind of just sparks something that, that maybe makes sense for you guys, or maybe, you know, will be something that you look into. Um, by no means am I claiming to be a guru on all this stuff. I mean, I learn a lot of stuff from you guys all the time, always do, um, you know, but, Really just wanted to touch on a few things that I thought was pretty productive and effective for us this year, you know, in terms of the screen deal and how we practice. I thought that's something that, that maybe something that you guys would look into that might make sense for you, you know, from a practice standpoint. The whole jet sweep thing I think is a, a pretty intriguing package, package. And then the whole mesh thing is a lot of people like to clinic on, um, you know, and so again, I hope you didn't get bored with that, but. You know, our whole thought with mesh is again, it is, it's an expensive play, no question. If you're going to do it right, it is an expensive play. You are going to have to invest in it, okay? But if you do, my recommendation, our philosophy was don't try and do it under just a million different looks. Don't try and get just too cute with it. Find a few formations that it makes sense for you to do it out of and just get really damn good at that. Okay, and if it grows from there, awesome. If it graduates from there, great. You know, but like I said, just kind of get those certain few pictures that you like that makes sense for you and really just go from there. Okay, appreciate you guys. Again, you guys let me know if you ever need anything. Just like Coach Dyke says, hopefully we're, uh, we're going to get to a place here soon where maybe you guys can come at least at the minimum, come see us on our campus and come hang out again. We can't wait until that day comes. Uh, but again, appreciate your time. I'm going to quickly just hand it over to uh, Tyler Oker, and he's at least going to touch on the coming weeks of how these clinics will work. Thanks, guys. You guys hear me all right? Well, we're going to, uh, we're going to have a, you know, a few more of these. We've got eight of them total. So, uh, Next week, we'll have Kaz Kazadi. He's our uh, assistant AD for human performance. He'll be on on uh, Wednesday about 5 o'clock. <clears throat> so him and his staff. And then the following week, we'll have Jim Levitt, who's our uh, our incoming DC. He'll be uh, settled in and ready to go. So uh, next few weeks will be good for you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to email us. Uh, we can get it to the coaching staff or to Coach Dykes, whatever you guys have. But uh, we're here for you. And um, – if you guys have questions, just let us know. So uh, appreciate you guys coming on and, and watching, checking us out. And uh, if you guys have anything for us, just let us know.